Hey everybody, um, welcome to my little hovel of a studio I call the cave. And if you've been following the thread on the homerecording.com analog only forum, uh, Tascam 58OB story, you'll know that I'm dealing with a runaway slave issue. I'm trying to slave my Tascam 58OB to Cubase through an ES50, um, Tascam ES50 synchronizer, and it's not working quite right. So I thought it might be a little easier just to shoot some video, put it up um, so that you can see what's going on. And um, so I'll take you on a little tour here. Here we have my 58. And right here is the ES50 synchronizer, which only talks SMPTE time code. So we've got track 8 striped on the 58. And then um, over here in Cubase, we have striped, if you will, a track with SMPTE time code there also. Out of Cubase, um, I've patched that here to a hardware output. It's, it's the timecode playback from the DAW is coming out at around um, 0 dBU. That goes into a snake. This is all temporarily patched together, so bear with me. Um, that comes over to the master timecode in on the back of the ES50. And then for simplicity's sake, and I hope I did this right, I striped the, the um, track of SMPTE code on the 58 at about minus 10 VU, and I'm just playing back straight out of the 58. I have that patched through here to the slave time code in on the back of the ES50. We've got um, our interface cable. The 58 is in external uh, sync mode. And so we're ready to chase. I've already set up my offset because if you've read the thread, you'll know that um, the time code generator was running all night and was up to about 15 hours off. So I've got this massive offset. But anyway, that's all set up and uh, we're ready to chase these guys. And there we go. Now, everything is working great. Um, by the way, this is the ES51 controller that goes along with the ES50 synchronizer. And um, here's my Yamaha, Yamaha O1X, which is uh, using for an interface and remote control device for Cubase. And so this is great. I'm really excited about this. I press play here, which of course puts Cubase into play mode, playing back that master timecode track and uh, press play and as you'd expect the 58 uh, jumps into play mode and it's already locked and that's fantastic I love it and we can see um, this is reading the time code back from Cubase that's playing back and I monitor the slave and uh, that's the time code from the 58 so that's all fine and good now, but the problem comes when I, um, if I change the p position of the timeline here, let's say, why don't we just, I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm just scrolling forward a little bit here on the O1X. So we've got a little bit of a time offset between Cubase and the 58 now. Now if I go ahead and press play, See, I didn't jump that far forward, but look at it go. And what it does is it does slow down like it's trying to hunt, like it knows it can't find something. But the problem is because the lifters are fully extended, the mute circuit is activated. So if it's going to pick up any reference point, which you can see it's certainly not picking up time code, and it should be the tack signal that it's picking up, but it's not for some reason or something. So now if I retract the lifters manually, now when it does that cyclical slowing down, it goes, whoa, okay. Okay, loses code for a second because it's fast winding, but then it does its cyclical little slow down. And once it reaches a certain speed, the mute circuit shuts off. And now it's getting the time code. 
because I believe that when the transport goes into fast wind mode, regardless of the lifter position, it mutes the output. So what's going to happen now is it's going to, it's in uh, at like a spool speed and I can let go of the lifters. Oh, see. Yeah, see now there it goes again. And as it slows down, mute circuit will shut off. Okay, now we're scrubbing a little bit. Or not. Yeah, it just happened to go way, way past that time. There we go. Now, of course, all of this would be much better if um, if the thing had some reference when it was in that fast wind mode. But I don't. I I have to assume it's not getting that, or I don't know if um, there should be something that's controlling lifter retraction. I know that based on the schematics of or the pinouts on the um, ES50 controller, it does indeed have lifter control. And I also know for certain that the ES50 is designed to deal with tack pulses because that's on the pinouts as well. It's in the um, in the language in the manual. And so something is just not working quite right and I can't figure it out. And so I hope you have enjoyed this and um, I hope you have some advisement for me so I can get these two guys talking effectively together.